Hello everyone, welcome to another session in Horta America TV. Today we're going to discuss a very important topic. We have learned a lot about how to maximize crop performance inside of growing systems. But today we're going to discuss how to find a balance between improving crop performance while maintaining high energy efficiency levels. So let's just start with information. Annually, indoor and greenhouse growers produce significantly more food per area in comparison to open field. So it is a fact that we have learned how to improve crop productivity over the years, and we are still expecting an exponential increase in this area. Now, the most important challenge is to find the most energy efficient way to keep increasing crop productivity. It is clear that growers will start to incorporate new management techniques, products, and technologies that allow them to increase portability in their projects in a more efficient way. In addition, nowadays growers experience a huge pressure to improve the use of energy and natural resources to produce food. So when speaking about energy efficiency, there are a lot of approaches we can take. However, we need to recognize two key aspects that have a great impact on energy efficiency, system management and the component selected for the system. Capability of our system to create a more energy efficient production will depend a lot on our system management for the different environmental variables. In addition, capability to have more control over this system management will also depend on the product selection. So the grower's last decision will be crucial to reach better results when working on designing a system that is looking to be more efficient. In order to optimize system management, we first need to understand our crop and the requirements. Secondly, we need to find a balance point where environmental variables and, by consequence, production can maintain consistency. Once we know the spot where we need to be, it is time to explore how to maximize energy efficiency when creating those conditions. Understanding each of the most common environmental variables, their interaction, and the components in our system used to control those environmental variables can help us to improve energy efficiency. So let's focus on the question to approach when looking to increase efficiency by working with the most common environmental variables. Starting with light. Light is directly related to crop performance and yield. Efficiency is all about high yields and lower resources consumed. So some of the questions that you can ask yourself and to your project when managing light is, is natural light enough to maximize crop productivity? Can you enhance crop productivity by using supplemental lighting? Also, if you are using artificial lighting, you need to select the, better, the best lamp. So are your lamps efficient enough? And is your spectrum developed to optimize crop performance for your specific crop? Another very important aspect is the impact of light in the expenses of the management control over all their environmental variables. There are some lamps that have a huge impact on temperature, humidity, BPD, even irrigation. So ask yourself, can you select a better lamp? Another important aspect is to know which is your objective. Sometimes we're looking for a photo period just to trigger flowering and other times we want to improve the development and growth. So ask yourself, are you selecting a lamp to improve growth or only to trigger flowering? There are different lamps designed for each of these purposes. So now let's move to airflow. Airflow can have an impact on plant gas exchanges, including CO2 intake for photosynthesis and transpiration. But airflow can affect or yield by reducing crop performance or even cause nutrient deficiencies. So it's always important to ask yourself if your system has a good design to promote good air circulation. A bad design can increase the amount of ventilation in the system meaning that you can have more expenses when trying to manage in ventilation. Also, do you have enough funds 
Sometimes we don't have enough fans or the capacity of the fans is not enough to move the volume of air required. So is also your air velocity uniform? Can you do something to improve uniformity? Remember, consistency is very important and uniformity in air velocity will be crucial to maintain consistency. So now let's move to humidity. Humidity can increase expenses in growing system management, promote diseases and increase irrigation when it's not under good management. So is humidity uniform in your system? Is there a specific area promoting more or less relative humidity? For example, wet walls, floors, fans, lights. You can use fans, for example, to try to move humidity around and make your system more uniform. So can you make any changes to improve uniformity and consistency in relative humidity? Temperature. When speaking about temperature in growing system, we can work with air temperature, return temperature, and leaf temperature. All of them will have a strong impact in plant metabolism and also product quality and harvest time. Temperature can also have an effect on humidity, transpiration rate, and BPD. Therefore, it's one of the most important variables to control when looking to improve consistency in growing systems. Some of the questions that you, that you can ask to your project when trying to do a better management of temperature are, is the design of the system done with the purpose of maximizing the energy balance to reach the desired temperature? Glazing material, shade clothes, insulation of indoor facilities, even the volume of the room can have an impact to reduce the cost of cooling and heating. So, are there any changes that you can do to reduce the cost of heating and or cooling? Now, speaking about natural light, natural light can have an impact in temperature. So, can you reduce radiation in the greenhouse without affecting the daily requirements of light in your crop to reduce overheating and with this, the demand of cooling? Now, moving to the size. Is your system oversized? Can you reduce the volume in order to have a better management? Now, be careful to spot any component that can affect negatively the temperature consistency in your growing systems. You can have lights, fans, fogging systems that can affect the consistency in your system when they are not well managed. Sometimes we forget about BPD. BPD is the amount of vapor that can still be stored in the air until the saturation point is reached under the same temperature. This variable is measured in kilopascal and is a result of interaction between relative humidity and temperature. It can provide information about growth transpiration and the risk of fungal development. So in order to maintain consistency in growing system, BPD can be a really useful tool. If you don't know how to calculate BPD, here we have the calculator developed by Dr. Greenhouse. You can use this link to calculate BPD. And BPD is, is specific for every club and even can be specific for a stage of development of a specific club. So a common range is 0.8 to 1.2 kilopascal, but remember to check the requirements for your club. This variable can help you to manage a system better because it will provide information about how humidity and temperature are affecting your system. So don't forget about BPD. Now, irrigation. All plants need water and nutrients to improve performance. However, plants can show an increased amount of water when environmental variables in our system are not well managed. Excess of transpiration can increase irrigation demand. Some variables related to transpiration are temperature, relative humidity, root zone humidity, airflow, and BPD. Some components in the greenhouse affecting transpiration can be or lamps, fans, shade clothes, exhaust fans, fogging systems, and more. So we need to check a lot of things to make sure that nothing is having a 
bad impact in irrigation. For example, are your lamps affecting transpiration significantly? We know that high pressure sodium lamps require additional ventilation equipment to maintain a proper room temperature, and this can affect, of course, transpiration and irrigation. Also, the use of exhaust fans can affect transpiration. And inside of a greenhouse, if we have too much radiation, this can also affect transpiration and irrigation. So let's try to check all the components that can affect all these variables. So there are a lot of environmental variables that we can check when trying to manage a system better. But another important aspect that we should consider in our system is maintenance. All the equipment used must keep working in the best condition to avoid situations that can increase the energy consumption in the system. So it's recommended to keep your, th to your team well-trained to recognize any issue on time. Remember, resource efficiency is equal to yield divided by the resources consumed. Every project can work to reduce resources. It is all about a good design, good selection of components, good management, and maintenance. In Hort Americas, we are committed to supply the best brands on the market that allow you to reach higher yields and better use of resources. I hope you enjoyed this session. Remember, my name is Carla Garcia. I am technical service in Hort Americas and Professor Grow in Instagram. See you on the next video. Bye-bye.